It is tempting to presume, based on the content of this module, that Bayes' theorem is a mathematical trick to solve a particular class of mathematical problems. Bayes' theorem, however, provides a powerful conceptual framework for performing statistical inference. In this video and the exercises that follow, I thus want to provide you with a very brief introduction to Bayesian statistics. Let's start this exploration by considering the problems that we have used Bayes' theorem to solve thus far. In these problems, there are generally two Bernoulli random variables, capital X and capital Y. In the statement of the problem, you are given the probability that capital X equals 1 and the conditional probabilities that Y equals 1 given X equals 1 and the conditional probability that Y equals 1 given X equals 0. The first thing to note is that because x and y are Bernoulli random variables, you can also compute the probability that x equals 0, the conditional probability that y equals 0 given x equals 1, and the conditional probability that y equals 0 given x equals 0 from the information in the question. These are just what all of these quantities are just 1 minus the terms that were given in the statement of the question. Given the information in the question, you can thus use the partition theorem to compute the probability that y equals 1. The question then finishes by using Bayes' theorem to calculate the conditional probability that x equals 1 given y equals 1. This is, and the, this is the end of the problem. Bayesian statistics supposes that what we are doing when we solve these types of problems is comparing two different models for the data that has been collected. In Bayesian statistics, the two conditional probabilities that we are given in the statement of the problem are thus two models that we might use for the data that has been generated. Furthermore, the final probability that we are given in the statement of the problem is the probability that the data has been generated from one of these two particular models. In other words, the value px equals 1 is a statement about our prior beliefs about which of the models is correct. Here, for example, as we have no reason to believe that the data is sampled from the model with x equals 0 rather than the model with x equals 1, we can set this prior belief equal to 0.5. We are thus assuming that the data is equally likely to have been generated by sampling from either of these two putative models. With this reinterpretation of the information that we are given in the question in mind, let's now consider what we are doing when we apply Bayes' theorem. The conditional probability that appears in the numerator here is the pro conditional probability that we would have got this particular result given that we are sampling from the model with x equals 0. The denominator, meanwhile, is the total probability of getting this result from both models. The quotient is thus the probability that we are sampling from the first model. In other words, when we use Bayes' theorem, we are given some new information, namely the fact that y was equal to 1 when we did our experiment. This new information allows us to refine our beliefs about the probability that the data was generated by sampling from one of the two putative distributions that we have considered. Bayes' theorem is thus not simply a tool for, class, for solving a particular class of problems. Bayes' theorem instead allows us to refine the probability that we are sampling from a particular model based on the data that we obtain by sampling from an unknown, unknown distribution. In the language of Bayes' theorem, we start with a prior probability in which we encode the probability of the various putative models we have for the data we have collected. As we know which of these, as we know what all these models are, we can calculate the likelihood that each of our various putative models would have generated the particular data set we observed. Bayes' theorem can then be used to calculate the conditional probability that the data was generated from sampling from each of our various putative models given what we have observed. 
This is the so-called posterior distribution. In the exercises that follow, you can start to see how, this, how powerful this idea is by considering how we might use Bayes' theorem with continuous random variables rather than discrete random variables. In the exercises, we are going to suppose that our data is generated by performing a series of Bernoulli trials. Critically, however, we are going to suppose that we do not know the parameter of the Bernoulli random variable. In other words, we don't know the probability of success. The probability of success in the first trial will thus be written as a conditional probability and will be set equal to an unknown variable called theta, as shown here. By writing the conditional probability in this way, we are thus considering multiple different models, i.e. models with all possible values of the theta parameter. To apply Bayes' theorem, we need to have some prior distribution that is a continuous function of this parameter. In the exercises that follows, we are going to suppose that there is some reason to believe that success is more likely that fa than failure when we do our experiments. We will thus assume that the prior distribution of the parameter theta is given by this simple function. As you can see, this is a valid probability density because if we integrate between 0 and 1, i.e. all the possible values a Bernoulli random variable can take, we get 1. The problem is then solved using the same procedure as you use for simple problems that you have used before. Suppose that the first trial you performed gave a success. You can use the partition theorem to calculate the total probability of getting a success from all models. Now, however, this has to be done by taking an integral rather than a sum because the prior distribution is continuous. If we substitute the expressions for the likelihood and prior from above into this expression, we find that we need to compute the following definite integral, which is relatively straightforward. The value of this definite integral is obviously a scalar constant. Consequently, when we substitute this into Bayes' theorem, we can get a new continuous distribution that tells us the probability density function for the parameter theta. For this particular problem, we thus have 2 theta squared multiplied by some scalar constant as the new posterior distribution for the parameter theta, given that the first experiment was a success. Now suppose that we have done more than one experiment. We can take the new posterior distribution that we have just obtained and use it for the prior in the next experiment. By repeating this procedure, we can thus arrive at a distribution for the parameter theta, given, that we have, given the results that we have obtained from n trials. Pretty nifty, hey? Eh? Anyway, you will have an opportunity to trial this for yourself using a computer algebra package in the exercises that follows. The exercises take you a little bit beyond the scope of the module, so if you don't understand everything, don't worry about it too much. I thought that as we are learning about Bayes' theorem, you might be interested in learning something about the statistics that we will learn in future years and how this builds on the foundational material that you have learned here. I hope this interests you and as always thanks for your attention and good luck with the exercises.